Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Uh, today I want to talk about a common subject, a, f a familiar subject to all of you, and that is the abundant life. And I want to talk about some keys uh, so that we can walk in the abundant life. And uh, the basic uh, verse, the core verse for tonight's message is 2 Corinthians 9, chapter 8. And God is able to make all grace. Now, grace is a gift. And God is able to make all grace abound. And the word abound is, is very closely related to abundant. So make all grace abound toward you that you having all sufficiency in all things uh, may have abundance for every good work. And so what I want you to see here is that where does abundance come from? from it comes through grace it's like salvation it comes through grace and so uh, abundance and and all kinds of blessings uh, are an operation of the holy spirit because he's called the spirit of grace and those are free gifts uh, you, you don't work uh, for them but uh, for the for this abundance you can steward it steward it and, and you pay attention you care for it uh, what god gives you and he gives you more as a result of that mm -hmm. uh, grace. So it's very closely related uh, to grace. Now, uh, there are the two keys that I want to talk about are purpose and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And both of them are very important. And, and if we don't understand how these two things relate to abundance, then we miss abundance. There's a lot of people live um, living in lack today uh, because they're not thankful to God, um, because they're not doing what God asked them to do. They're not obedient uh, to fulfill God's purpose. So those are the really the two big keys and that we're going to be talking about today. Why don't you go with me? <clears throat> uh, Gwen just joined us. The two keys to abundance and the abundant life are to be thankful and to be doing what God calls you to do, that's your purpose. Mm. So it's the purpose that God has for you on this earth, and it's being thankful. You know, Deuteronomy, we're going to start here in Deuteronomy 28, uh, verses 47 and 48, uh, says, you have not served God with joy and uh, ingratitude. Now that's interesting. So the question I have for all of us, have we been serving God with joy mm -hmm. and with, with gratitude? gratitude? Now, the thing about gratitude is uh, we're thankful, and we can be thankful before we get something, uh, and that's pretty important. Uh, be thankful before you get something, so don't be mad and, and, uh, and just waiting until you get something, and then when you get something, uh, then you would be grateful. But this says you haven't served God with joy and in gratitude. <clears throat> now, what's really interesting about this is that he's talking about the curse here. Deuteronomy 28, verse 14 verses are all about blessings. And all of the rest of the chapter, the bulk of the chapter of Deuteronomy 28 is about the curse. And so... This verse, 47, is obviously not in the first 14 verses, so it's a part of the curse. And when we do not serve God with joy and gratitude, then we will serve, this is what verse 48 says, we will serve our enemies mm -hmm. in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in lack of all things. Oh, wow. Uh, so that's a pretty simple example yeah. of the curse here, how we got into the curse. The curse was we didn't serve God. And this, this applies to all generations all time. Of course, we will realize that Jesus redeemed us from the curse. We'll talk about that in a moment. But the curse comes. And um, Proverbs says the curse doesn't come without a cause. Mm -hmm. So the cause mm -hmm. is... If people do not serve God with joy, with joy mm -hmm. in gratitude, they will, this is the curse, serve their enemies in hunger, 
in thirst, in nakedness, and in lack of all things. So that's the curse. That is poverty. That is poverty. Mm -hmm. That's the mm -hmm. curse. Now, what I want you to do is visualize Jesus on the cross. And what, when Jesus was on the cross, he was hungry mm -hmm. because he hadn't eaten all day. He didn't eat all night. Uh, they arrested him in the night. And from that time on, he didn't eat. He didn't drink. And so mm -hmm. he was hungry. He was thirsty. He was Listen, naked. Man. And hanging on the cross, I want you to see Jesus hungry, naked, na uh, thirsty, naked, and having nothing, lacking all things. Mm -hmm. So what happened, Jesus hung on the cross to endure our poverty curse Ooh, Hallelujah! so that we could share mm -hmm. his abundance. Hallelujah. That's pretty exciting. He hallelujah. was the picture hanging there on the cross hungry thirsty naked and lacking all things mm -hmm. was the picture of who we were to be because we haven't everybody was under adam because of adam's sin everybody was under the curse and under the poverty curse and, and particularly individuals get into it when they are they do not serve god in joy with gratitude then they are going to be cursed to have a poverty curse mm. to be hungry thirsty naked lack so they're basically the difference between abundance is there is no lack uh you have more than enough that's what abundance is overflow so i'm not talking about today i'm not talking about money i i probably won't even mention money in this session other than right now what i'm uh explaining uh, this is just having more than enough whatever you need a and jesus see took on that curse endured the curse that was intended for us he was hungry thirsty naked had nothing so that we could share in his riches and that's what second corinthians uh eight mm -hmm. nine says uh, though he was rich you're talking about jesus Though he was rich, he became poor. Can you see him on the cross? He became poor so that we might enjoy his riches. And so this is the great exchange. He was rich. He became poor so that he took on our poverty. He endured our poverty that we might uh, enjoy his riches or his abundance. That's the great exchange, what happened on the cross related to poverty and versus abundance. He took on our poverty, our lack, so that we could have his abundance. Well, you know, in John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus explained why he came. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So he came that we might have abundant life. Glory mm -hmm. to God. And in coming then, he took on the curse, a great exchange, a poverty curse that was intended for all of us where we would live in lack. Uh, that was what was intended for us through the sin of Adam. Uh, then Jesus took it all on himself. I mean, that's the picture of being hungry, thirsty, naked, and having uh, nothing and lacking everything. That is the picture of Jesus on the cross. He did all of that for us for the great exchange so that we could receive his abundance and his abundance i'm not even talking about money i'm talking about having what you need so let's let's look at jesus in his lifetime and see whether or not he had abundance well he fed five thousand <laughs> matthew 14 he fed five thousand men and in addition to the five thousand men women and children, children and what did he have he had two fishes and five loaves <laughs> that's abundance having more than and they Hallelujah. took it they had this little boy offered this uh, lunch to him just a little boy's lunch and they took up 12 baskets of what remained yeah. afterwards that is abundance hallelujah <clears throat> hallelujah okay let's go to matthew 15 matthew 15 he fed four thousand men plus women plus children so we know there were thousands there and how did he do it? He had seven 
seven uh, loaves and a few fall small fish. So that's abundance. And, and they came up with seven baskets full. Uh, yeah. He had he had more left over at the end than what he started, started with. with. That's abundance. That's the what that's what I'm talking about. Abundance today. That wherever you start, you you increase. It's about increase abundance, having more than enough, uh, and and not lacking in anything. So that we're just looking at Jesus and just uh, going through the New Testament the Gospels and see. Uh, the abundance that he walked in. Well, uh, they came to him about taxes one day, and and he told Peter go out to the sea and mm -hmm. cast in a hook. Amen. Yeah, he didn't let Peter put anything on it. Now, oh, but let me put a fish on it, or let me put a little minnow on it, or let me put a worm. No, Jesus didn't say you put a worm. Put join your stuff with my stuff. He said Jesus just said throw go throw the hook in the sea, uh -huh. and, and the fish is going to come up and take out the the coin out of his mouth and so jesus spoke the coin into the mouth of the, the fish, fish and it happened glory to god that's abundance that you can just say to somebody just go out to the sea and cast a hook into the sea uh -huh. and the first fish that comes up is going to have enough money <laughs> to pay your bills and my bills hallelujah hallelujah that's abundant i'm talking about what is abundance that's abundance well in uh John uh, chapters 12 and 13, we found that Jesus had a treasurer. And it's real interesting who Jesus chose as his treasurer was Judas. He was described as a thief. So he was stealing out of the treasury, out of Jesus' treasury. And, and people think, oh, he was, Jesus didn't have anything. Well, he had enough that he needed a That's treasurer. Right. <laughs> and he had so much that if any, if Peter, James and John had found out he had been stealing out of the out of the bag. They would have just beat him in the head. They, they were yeah. they were they were they were fishermen. They were fish they were sail sailors. <laughs> they were fishermen, and they were not going to let somebody steal. But Jesus, glory to God, he had so much. He had a bag mm. that a thief could just be stealing it all the time, and and the um, the disciples didn't even know about it. I'm talking about abundance. Jesus walked in abundance. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. You know, he was always giving thanks to the Father. <clears throat> yes. He was always giving thanks to the Father. And uh, one night at the Last Supper, we call it the Last Supper. Well, uh, he, Jesus said somebody's going to betray me. And then he, he talked about who was going to betray him. And when... Uh, when he said that, Judas got up and left, and, and the other disciples looked at him and, and thought, well, he's the treasurer. He's just going to go out and give something mm, to, the, to poor. the poor. <laughs> because that was the normal procedure. Hallelujah. In, in the middle of the night. It, it, was, it was not uncommon for the treasurer of Jesus to get up and go out and, and give money to the people who were poor Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the of the night. That's, Hallelujah. What, that's exactly uh, that didn't happen that way that night, but it had happened often. And that's what the disciples thought was going to happen that day. I want you to know that Jesus had abundance. Amen. And so that's the kind of that's the vision of abundance. I want you to see today. It's lacking nothing. When you need something, you will have it uh, when you walk in abundance. And Jesus abundance. came. Hallelujah. To give you abundant life. Mm. So now the it's these two keys I want to focus on for the next few minutes. And, and the first one I want to talk about is purpose. So I mentioned it there in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. He said, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you having all sufficiency in all things may have abundance for every good work. Now mm that every good work, we're going to follow that up in Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10, it said that God prepared uh, good works for you to do before time, time began again. in Christ Jesus. So God had a plan. He's out there in eternity, and he sees you. He has you in his heart, 
and he has some things he wants you to do to accomplish in your lifetime. This is before he ever created uh, the universe. He, he has you in his heart and he has your purpose in mind, what, what he wants you to do. And he creates these good works. So you are his workmanship. Yeah, this is yeah. Ephesians chapter two, verse 10. You are his workmanship. You are his handiwork. And he has prepared some good things for you to do. He did these before he ever created anything else. This is before time in Christ Jesus. Just like Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world. Well, these works were prepared for you before, before time began. And these are the good works. And so these two verses go hand in hand together. He gives us the abundance that we need in order to fulfill purpose. Ooh, amen. Okay. Say it again. He gives us abundant resources so we can fulfill purpose. And what purpose is that? It's not the purpose that we decide to do. It's not the good works that we decide to do. It's the good works that we discover that he has already prepared for us in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so God has a purpose for us. And we will only have a rich full life when we do what God put us on this earth to do, when we realize that we have good works to do, he has prepared them, he has planned them, he had them in his heart before he created the universe, and these are the things we cannot decide that we're going to do this <laughs> or we're going to do that, nor can we let somebody else tell us, well, this is where I need you, I'm going to fit you here I'm in this fit little you in. in this cubby hole this is what you're going That's to right. do you, you cannot let somebody else tell you what you're to do because god has a plan for you has good works you have to discover those how do we discover them by the holy spirit amen, amen. Uh, and and so we have to ask god what are these good works you want me to do and so purpose has to be important to you if you want to have abundance uh, it has to go along with your purpose. He gives you abundance so that you can fulfill your purpose. And those are those good works he prepared for you before eternity, uh, uh, before time began. So while he was in eternity, he was thinking about you. He was planning for you Hallelujah. to fulfill Hallelujah. Uh, your destiny. You Ooh. need to discover what this purpose is that you're on this earth. Every person here, is on this earth for a purpose or many purposes, the purpose of God, but many good works to do many good works. And so you do those by uh, asking God, following the Holy Spirit, being led by the Spirit of God, then you will be able uh, to fulfill those because, why? Because he's going to give you an abundant abundance of resources, which is grace. And that enables you uh, to fulfill your calling, uh, to fulfill your purpose. That, that, that's exciting to me, that God has, has things for you to do. And those are the only things that are fulfilling. To fulfill your life, you've got to discover what those purposes are. And you might say, well, I, I've got to, I do a lot of good things. I, I do a lot of good things here and I didn't go there and I do a lot of good things, mm -hmm. but those are not the things that God has prepared for you unless you ask him and you know, the Holy Spirit shows you these are the things I want you to do. That's where you're going to have the resources. So you, you, there are really two different paths that you can take and you could say, well, okay, I want to do all of these things, do all of these things. But if I'm lacking something, you might want to look back and say, well, and if I'm lacking resources, maybe I'm not doing the things God wants me to do. Mm, so wow. that's the first key. Wow. Key to key number one to fulfilling uh, to have abundance is realize that the plans that you're doing and what you're doing, the good works that you're doing, those fulfill God's purpose for you. Key number two is thankfulness. Okay, let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. That's talking about the curse. It said, because you didn't serve God in joy, in, with gratitude, then 
you're under the curse. So if people aren't serving God in joy, with gratitude, they are under the poverty curse. Mm -hmm. So there's gratitude, there's thankfulness. So key number two is thankfulness, okay? So let, let's just think about thankfulness uh, for a minute. Uh, let's just go through some of Paul's writings. Ephesians 5 uh, talks about mm -hmm. that. Um, let's say 18 through 21 says, be filled with the spirit. If you're filled with the spirit, there are three things then verses 19, 20, and 21 talk about. If you're filled with the spirit, you will give praises continually. Mm -hmm. That's verse 18. Uh, um, nine, I'm sorry, 19. 20 says you will give thanks continually. A and 21 says you won't have a haughty attitude, but you'll have a submissive uh, attitude, a, a, an attitude that's sensitive to the Holy Spirit. So let's go through those again. You, if you are filled with the Spirit, you will praise the Lord continually. You'll be thankful continually. Hallelujah. And you will have a submissive uh, attitude. Mm. Okay? That's, mm. that, that's about something uh, the, the book of Ephesians talks about. I'm just going to go through a few of Paul's writings here and talk about thankfulness, how important it is. Philippians, that's in the next book, Philippians, Philippians 4, 6. Uh, you know, it says, make your... Um, uh, in all things you know, with prayers and supplications uh, and thanksgiving. Mm, let your request thanksgiving. let your request be made known with thanksgiving. So if you don't, so you can pray, you can pray till your eyes fall out. But if you don't give God <laughs> thanks, if you don't give God thanks, your prayers are not going to be effective. It says <laughs> With thanksgiving, make your requests yes, known. No, amen, amen. Hallelujah. With the, we're talking about key number two is thanksgiving and having a grateful attitude, being grateful to the Lord, and that'll keep you out of the poverty curse. Amen. And it'll make your prayers effective. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, the next book is Colossians. I love, I love this. Yeah, Colossians yeah. three, uh, I believe it's fifteen. It says, let the peace of God of Christ, mm -hmm. let the peace of Christ rule in your, your heart. heart. Now, the word rule right there means let it be the umpire. Let it make the decision. Let, let that umpire make the decision uh, whether you're going to do this or whether you're going to go there. Uh, it be Let peace be the umpire. Let it be the arbitrator. That's, that's the basic meaning of that word, rule your heart. And, and so we've talked about this before, about peace. Uh, do the things that you have peace inside your heart to do. Uh, let it be the empire. To, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going, if, if I'm supposed to go over here to my left and, and I don't have peace about it, don't go. Let it be your empire. Mm -hmm. Say, so don't go that way. But if you have peace, it's supposed to go right. Okay, you, but you have peace to go that way. That's the way to go, okay? So let peace uh, rule in your heart and be thankful. Woo, glory. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, be thankful. Amen. That's pretty exciting. Be thankful. So that's the 15th verse. Amen. And so that's, you know, that's a commandment. Uh, it, it didn't, he didn't say, well, if you feel like it, be thankful. That's right. It has nothing to do with it. Your feeling. If you feel like doing it. It's a, your will. What mm -hmm. is your will? Mm -hmm. Are you willing and obedient? Mm -hmm. you, okay. We, we see now that being thankful it is uh, a commandment. And so we have to be uh, obedient to the commandment. So if we are willing and obedient, we will be blessed. We will we'll eat, eat the, the good, good of, of the, the land. land. Amen. Hallelujah. And then let's drop down to the 17th verse. And it talks about whatever you do, do it in the name of Jesus and with thanksgiving. So let me ask you, have you mm -hmm. everything you've done today, have you done it in the name of Jesus? And oh, hallelujah. have you done it? <laughs> oh, wow, wow, wow. Thankfulness. Wow. Oh, glory to God. Oh. That's just all repent, right? Oh, now. I repent. Father, we, we've done some things yes, today. That we yes, Lord Jesus. We weren't thankful. Yes. Uh, as we were doing. I repent, Lord. And uh, we didn't do them in the name Jesus of Jesus. Name. So we just repent and, and help us yes, walk yes, in the way that you want us to do in the Hallelujah. way of righteousness and let us do everything we do. Amen. In the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. 
and with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Isn't that, isn't that exciting? It's good. It's good. It's good. Isn't, that, isn't that exciting? Everything we do. Yes. Hallelujah. If you cook dinner tonight, yes. did you do it uh, in the name of Jesus? When you brushed your teeth. <laughs> Hallelujah. You did it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and then you do it with thanksgiving. Amen. Abundance. See, abundance. Abundance I'm talking about. There are two keys to it. And one of them is thanksgiving. It says, if you're not thankful, then the poverty curse comes upon you. That was Ooh. Deuteronomy 28. That's what we saw there. Mm, mm, so we've mm, got to be mm. thankful. Hallelujah. Mm. Now we've got down to uh, Colossians. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 5, there's this real powerful uh, few verses here that says, um, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, Hmm. give thanks in everything. everything give thanks but this is the will, will of, god. of god okay so you might say well i don't know what the will of god is you mm -hmm. always know what the will of god is it's always, always the will, will of god, god to give, give thanks. thanks now the next verse amen hallelujah <laughs> so we're talking about uh first thessalonians 5 the next verse is quench not the spirit see if you do not mm -hmm. if you do mm -hmm. not give mm -hmm. thanks then you quench the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, what does that mean? Amen. You stop the flow of the Holy Spirit if you're not thankful. Okay, but in the where do, what happens when you have the flow of the Holy Spirit? That's where abundance comes from. Abundance comes from the free flow and overflow of the Holy Spirit in your life because mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, and God is able. Hallelujah. To make all, all grace abound, uh, overflow to mm. you. That grace is the work of the Holy Spirit it, because he's the spirit of grace. This is the operation of the Holy Spirit. Uh, all abound, overflow to you. W when do you stop the overflow? Uh, and we're talking about abundance. When do you stop the overflow of the Holy Spirit and uh, the overflow of abundance? Mm -hmm. You stop it. When you are not grateful, when you are mm -hmm. do not give thanks to God, rejoice evermore, mm -hmm. pray without ceasing. ceasing, in everything give, give thanks, thanks, for this is the will of God, and quench not the Holy well, Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. See, if you don't, if you don't give thanks to the Lord, it's going to stop the overflow. You're going to wonder, well, where, why am I experiencing lack? in this area or that area why am i because you've stopped the flow of the holy spirit, spirit. Mm. you've stopped the abundance oh wow overflow wow in your wow. life wow wow glory to wow. god wow i have something that the lord shared with me okay i think sure he wants to say something yes i believe it fits here okay this is what he said to me just a moment ago he <clears> said <throat> come out of the natural and go into the supernatural to receive abundance. There are people that want to be in abundance. They want to be um, receiving everything that they need. They want to uh, be joyful. They want to have peace. They want to have plenty of, of everything. And this is the way to do it. It says to come out of the natural realm and go into the supernatural. And the only way we can do that is by the spirit of God to receive abundance. And when I'll, I'll explain a little bit more in a few minutes. Okay. Well, I'm just, I'm bringing it to closure and then you can take over. I'm bringing this message to closure that it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Abundance is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's grace. And God is able to make all grace mm -hmm. abound. Mm -hmm. That's that abundance. It's going to overflow to you. Then you having all sufficiency in all things mm -hmm. may have abundance and for mm -hmm. every good, good work. work. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't that Hallelujah. A, that's a, that sums it up. Yes. It's about the Holy Spirit. Yes. And we cannot stop the movement and the overflow of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But we would do that if we're not thankful. That's because right. Because that quenches the flow of the Holy Spirit. Yes, it does. Okay. I, and I just want to say this finally, that 
<clears throat> there are two different realms of blessing that you can walk in. Mm. Two different mm. realms. Which realm do you think Jesus Christ came to give you? Mm -hmm. The higher mm -hmm. realm or the lower realm? The higher realm? Where does he want you? In the higher realm or mm -hmm. the lower realm? It's the same thing as Sherry was saying a moment ago, in the natural or in the supernatural. Mm -hmm. the higher realm or the lower realm? Well, what, you know, what he says, and, and Peter reminded us that the Lord, I mean, uh, Paul reminded us that the Lord Jesus said these words. It's more blessed to give. Give than to receive. Than to mm -hmm. receive. The higher realm of blessing mm -hmm. is to give. Amen. The lower realm of blessing is to receive. Amen. Where does God want you? In the higher realm mm -hmm. of blessing to give. Where, mm -hmm. where do you want to be? Well, a lot of us want to be down here in this lower realm. That's the natural realm. That's the realm where uh, uh, we're receiving. But, but it's Jesus, the Lord Jesus himself said mm -hmm. this. It's more blessed to give mm -hmm. than to receive. All right, I'll turn it over to Sherry.